Southwood Review uh, cover. Special thanks to Rose and Justin. You've been wonderful helping with this transition. And again, thank you for having me here. Um, they mentioned I should come in and talk a little bit about uh, myself and my practice and what I'm doing. Um, photography. You see those two people in the back there with cameras. Uh, photography started for me as a child. My first camera <laughs> came from my dad, which was a Nota SLR 101. Um, they're both really accomplished photographers. I've learned a lot from them and have carried that practice into my adult life. Uh, I found as a youth, uh, the camera would give me access to almost everything. If you had a camera, you could get backstage. If you had a camera, you could go to the park. If you had a camera, you could meet the beautiful young ladies. Uh, you'll see in some of these pictures I have a connection with shooting some of the beautiful young ladies. But the camera uh, has become a tool. It was great for college. It helped me pay for college. It was great in corporate America when I went to work with Arnold McDonnelly, and that was sort of my introduction into graphic design and multimedia because I was selling printing for them, pre-press. And that sort of started the process. Also, when I think about photography and compare the old days to now, I kind of you know, reminisce or uh, look back on film and think how it was such a great vehicle for learning photography. And now look at how digital makes it great for you to explore your photography and share it with people around the world effortlessly. But moving back into practice, um, I generally like to do um, portrait work and uh, architecture. Those are my, uh, my love. I love black and white and um, have made an effort of trying to convert digital into looking like film. So that's been something that's kind of helped me over the years to get some acclaim. Um, skipping forward, I now am an instructor. I uh, teach at Chicago State. I teach at several of the local high schools, one being Urban Prep, and there's also a local art center called um, Oakwood Shores. And what we've been doing is trying to get the youth more interested now in filmmaking. Um, we love photography, but we look like it appears that the new direction is going to be film and video. So that is our new tool for um, telling our stories, sharing experiences, and being involved with um, photography, um, photography as a whole. Let's see. So moving forward. Um, I am now studying uh, my master's in art education at the Art Institute, where I can now try and apply some of the technology that I'm getting from photography and graphic design and multimedia, and take that when I go back into the schools to teach and <coughs> sort of share my practice. <laughs> so with this, I didn't know if in this presentation would be open up for questions or if I was just um, supposed to. I'm sorry. Tony, so, so could, if you could just for a second, um, since, you know, when this image came in uh, for consideration of Southwood Review, I remember sitting at the computer monitor with all the others and looking at the images, and, you know, it just hit me, wow, I said that would make a great cover. And everybody else said, yeah, and then they would. So, um, but could you talk about this image in particular and what, what you were trying to capture or communicate? The, um, the, main, the main motivation for doing that piece was several years ago, I had to design uh, an invitation for a gallery by Gallery de Bouchard. And they were doing a collaboration with the Art Institute where there was an exhibit coming in from Benin. And so this young lady, her name is Amanda Furge. She's uh, from my hometown, we're both from Mississippi. And she had similar characteristics to some of the sculptures that I had seen. So we decided. Um, to kind of schedule the shoot and try and recreate some of that energy. And this particular image that you chose for your cover was a perfect one. A lot of people like the idea of how we manipulated life and manipulated using her pose. And for me, it was a very empowering and strong image. Um, it also was entered in the black uh, creativity exhibit at the museum two years ago and won first place. So that's when I felt like there really must be some connection to this piece and decided to use it as a um, piece that kind of represents my work. This piece, along with another piece, is actually in the magazine that has a gentleman with a white hat it's on page 112. Um, it's called uh, Drummers uh, on uh, 63rd Street, Drummers on Hay Street Beach. These are all part of also a body of work that we put together that was represented from people from South Shore area. So this young lady, um, along with the image that's in the book, were part of uh, people that we were photographing in the community, trying to show a direct connection between uh, 
their look, what's going on, and how I can apply it to the work I'm doing today. So when I did submit the image, I was well not surprised, but pleasantly surprised when I got a note back that the piece would be used along with um, the drummers on the H Street image, and thought well, this would be a fantastic way for me to kind of share my creative vision uh, with the world, and most definitely with uh, Columbia. If you have any questions, I'm open to them. If not, I've got a midterm. And <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.